Vinny, I have to ask a very basic question. How did you discover this? Uh, to be honest, this is just part of a normal research process where we were just looking through open web servers to look for any uh, databases that potentially have valuable information in them, and we just kind of came across it. How does this breach, if you will, fit into all of the other data breaches that you've discovered? In terms of size and scope, we hear a billion people and we sort of freak out. Where does that fit in in your world? So I would say this is probably among, uh, you know, one of the largest that I've probably ever discovered, maybe largest that anyone has. Um, it was so large in size that the initial size that we uncovered was actually four billion records. And once we started to deduplicate a lot of what we found, we kind of whittled that number down to 1.2 billion, which is actually fairly significant. So talk to me about the relationship between the Google Cloud and People Data Labs, because you said that most of this data was collected by a company called People Data Labs, but it was being held on a Google Cloud server. Explain those to me. Sure, so People Data Labs is an enrichment company, and what that means is you can send them an email address and get back an entire user profile. They're essentially data brokers. Now, the, what's interesting about this is that People Data Labs didn't actually suffer a breach, at least as, as far as I know. Um, they most likely sold that data to a customer legally. I mean, they had contracts in place, and that customer uh, would have kind of mishandled that data and had it on a, an, open, an open Google Cloud server and no thoughts on who that customer may be or what the data was used for? Uh, unfortunately not. I mean, this is something that we won't, I don't think, ever have visibility into. I mean, I, you know, I personally notified the FBI once I found the server and they were able to get it taken offline, but they're under no obligation to disclose who owned that server, and because of privacy regulations, Google won't disclose who their customer is either. Who should bear the responsibility for this? Is it Google, is it People Data Labs, or is it that third unknown party? I think it should be the third unknown party. What we lack currently at this point is some sort of uh, regulatory body that will actually go out and force the company to admit their mistake, which currently they, you know, we don't have. Do you want to see that type of regulatory body? I, I do, I mean, and I think, you know, there was a recent article um, by ABC with Tim Cook where he was discussing all of the different, um, the need for additional privacy controls and privacy legislation. I think that's something we're sorely lacking because when you look at not only the size of this data breach but also the content, I mean having everyone's social media information from Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, you know, GitHub um, is in my opinion much more significant than having their passwords because of all the single sign-ons that you're seeing more and more. Um, people can sign on to services with Facebook, sign on with Twitter, and so having a password isn't as relevant anymore. And now when I can associate a phone number and an email address with a Facebook or a Twitter profile, that becomes much more valuable in the eyes of an attacker. And is that what makes this data so scary? Because we don't need the passwords anymore. They have all the information they need? Correct. And so, you know, the other thing too is we really have no visibility or no control into what data is being collected and how it's being sold. You know, in, again, going back to the Tim Cook interview, you know, he mentioned that Apple doesn't want to make money collecting their data, and that's true. It's not the big companies that we really need to worry about. It's these little data brokers like PDL and like so many other companies that are just collecting volumes of information that we have absolutely no visibility into. And then on top of that, we have no visibility into who they're selling the data to and what they're, who they're selling the data to and how they're you know, how that company is using it. So I think that's kind of where the regulations need to step in. You know, what data is being collected and then how is it being used?